Do you know, do you know something that like, I've always wanted to ask as well? Is like, you know, for you, like young players coming through that West Ham team, like you, Joe, Carrick, when you, like people like, like Ruddock and Wright oh, mate. and um, Lomas. Decanio, Steve Lomas, Lomas. Like, like the characters in that team. It's the best, mate. Like, yeah, but like, how did you, as a young player, it's like tough. it feels like it's sink or swim a little bit. Like Sink or swim. Big characters there. Give the ball away, you're getting hammered. Like, it was just like, in a way, it's good because you grow up so fast. And it was almost like, it sounds crazy, it was almost like, oh, it was almost like you're scared to give the ball away. So just, just having that sort of like, oh, if I give the ball away, I'm going to get hammered. Right? But Trevor Sinclair, like uh, Razor, right, it was there. Paolo. Paolo, Paolo was good with the young players. He, who, like, who's the worst though? Who was harsh with the Trevor, Trev, Trev was on you. But then after training, he'd be the first one to hug you and sort of like give you anything you need. But even, even like John Moncur, Steve Lomas, oh, Lomi was fiery. You're just scared to give the ball away. So like, even that's helping your development because when you get, you know you have to keep it. Everything you did has to be, and I think growing up in that sort of environment, like training with the first team every day at the age of 16, it's like, like it was proper. Mm -hmm. Who's the best you played with other than me, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Decanio. Really, Decanio. Would you, would you say he was the, he was the best? Yeah, pa Paolo was like a, naturally he was probably like a number 10. Went like a nine, like, he would go, but it's like, you know, like technically he was just like, he used to do this chop where he would go to shoot and then chop, then he'll go wide and face people up. Like, and you know what he's going to do? But he just couldn't stop him. I used to go home, I'd watch Ian Wright's DVD. I watch the DVD, watch his finishing, watch the movement. I go train the next day, I just do all the stuff I've seen, as well as getting coached off the coaches. So I was always learning. That's exactly, exactly where I was going to go. Like, when I look at your game, I see so much of Ian Wright, even with your celebrations. You know, like the way you strike the ball sometimes. Like, I see so much of Ian Wright in your game, like how much of an influence was he? He was massive because I was lucky, obviously. When I signed for West Ham, he was still there. Just before, I think he, he went to Nottingham Forest after that. But obviously at that stage, I knew that it's the back end of his career. He's not going to be there long. So I'm just, I was just going to try and take as much from him as possible. Um, obviously, as well as like, obviously Lamps was there, Rio, all that lot. But like, the Canyon was there, was brilliant with the young players. But right, it was just like, spoke about finishing movement. He was sort of like holding me during training. So I time my movement in a box. So loads of stuff that like, I took from writers at when what, I was 16 what, what years old. What specifically did he do, Jermaine? What, what kind of, like, give us an insight. Like, on uh, when you say, what, what would he do? Hold you back in the book? Like, I think, what, I think, what, what, like, specifically do you remember? Was so we do, like, like cross, one... we do crossing and finishing. He always just says to me, he said, you're getting, into the, you're getting into the box too early. Your movement's got, your, your timing's got to be better. Because obviously, you're so eager to score goals. You're getting into the box and sometimes the ball's coming behind you or, like, so it's all about timing. So he used to sort of, like, just hold on to my training kit. Especially back then, the training kit was so baggy. And you'd be wanting to move. Right. So he'd been holding to my training kit and, it, and, and, then, and it, then it would push me across the near post and then I'd get my finish and stuff like that. But just timing. And I think when you do all these things as young kids, it sticks, it, just, it stays with you. Do you know what I mean? So like... It's mad. Like for yeah. me hearing the idea of Ian Wright holding the, the back of your, your, your vest. Like, like, and you're wanting to move and it feels unnatural. That and then you release. It's so yeah. weird, like, because that was the exact same. I think it's so common in young forwards that you want to get into the box early. But if you if you delay it, you've got more chance of scoring. If you've gone past the near post, there's absolutely zero chance. Yeah. If you look at it percentage-wise, if you're, you know, arriving in the middle of the goal, sort of as the ball's delivered, obviously, you know, 50, 60, 70 percent, it just increases your percentage of scoring. It's like, you know, you've you got no chance if you're past the near post by the time the ball comes in, you know. And it's just over-eagerness, isn't yeah. it? I remember coaches and... Managers hold, holding me back. <laughs>